Well, hello, and welcome to Dirk Weekdays. It's Tuesday, Speedy Tuesday. I have a pen in my hand, making some notes for myself. How are you all doing today? Who's in the room? 14 of you already, and four comments, starting off with Andrew Wolkovich, as always, iBasher's head cheerleader and mascot. Andrew says, with the Canadian $5 super chat, super chat, super chat, soup, soup, super chat, super chat, super chat, soup, soup, super chat. Working till 5.30. Everybody upvote, share, and subscribe. Also, only if you're able, should you become a Patreon. And I agree. If you're able to do something like that, great. If not, just join the party. You're one of the bastards. The bastards are a very select and special gang of people, and we love you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for that, my dear friend, we get, we started out with, uh, with, uh, the super chat gong, super chat gong, super chat gong, bang a gong, get it on. So happy to not have you on the block list. Uh, we still don't know what that was about and how that happens. Very strange, very strange indeed. Uh, Angelo Minichello is here with the extra eye. Dirk, good evening to you and the Bastards crew. Good evening, Bastards. Nick Sisto is here. Patreons all, by the way. Carolyn Martin, the lovely and glorious Carolyn Martin says evening. Good evening, darling Carolyn. Great to see you, Dean. Double streaming, easy. Oh, is he still on? <sighs> well, he's in Milano and he's having dinner. I was running around like a lunatic today. Got a haircut. Um, went for my 1930s businessman haircut, real short on the back and the sides, left a little gray on the sides and uh, long on the top. Uh, old fashioned D style CW watch enthusiast. Happy Speedy Tuesday! Hey, great to see you. Great, I got my Speedmaster reduced on my 1479 with 811 end links, as always, because it's Tuesday. Bert on D, hey Bert, hey Dirk, how are you? Good to see you, man. CW is working the night shift, and Mr. Badgas, you're a mean one, Mr. Badgas. Or I should say, you're a bastard, Mr. Badgas, with your cheers and your upvotes. You're a badgas little watch enthusiast on the bastard show, Mr. Badgas. You're a most wonderful and ex expedient wonderful person who hangs out in the show ray ray says dean is ray ray here i don't see ray ray where's ray ray is ray ray here speak up ray ray oh man of western ireland uh looking very trim da -da -da. not as trim as i'd like to be i'm working on it though meeting a lot of egg whites during the day i'll have like three egg whites just trying to clear my shit up for summertime i try to figure out how to fill up my day with stuff and errands because my life is so drastically different than it was a couple of weeks ago and i'm um, just trying to get on with it if it's possible at all it is speedy tuesday uh how many people out there have their speedies on are you are you wearing your speedies carolyn are you wearing your speedmaster professional today are you wearing your speedmaster reduced which one are you wearing today carolyn if so please send us a picture of it or both double fist it lord h lord h da, 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 da. scotty h is here with his g-shock avatar good afternoon dirk good afternoon to you lord sire square sire, squire good to see you how's everybody in the chat doing so yeah he's doing um i guess he's doing a rebel stream ah. uh but that's okay because it's ocean he can do what he wants um, they're just sitting around and just talking about watches and Ashin's having pizza and pasta, which is very, very unlike him. Jade says, evening. Good evening, Jade. And there's a lovely picture of you. Wow. What a beautiful looking lady you are indeed. And it's great to have you on the show. Officially, we had your pictures yesterday and I see more pictures today. 
borrowed another one. I'm going to just take a little sneak peeky to see what these are. I don't generally look at the picks beforehand. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, very interesting. Oh, my. That is... How appropriate for today. Can I say that, Jade Prine? Or is it Preen? Got to make sure. Oh, Mr. Bagus is wearing his Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8. I can't, did, you, did, you, did you send a picture of that for us today? Dear darling Bad Gas, I hope that you did. Uh, that would be incredible because we'd all love to look at that and just fawn. I was talking to a bunch of people this morning about speedies because we do that on Tuesday. And uh, everybody was telling me what their wish list is. And that's the thing about Speedmasters. They come in so many different flavors that there's pretty much one to suit everybody. Now, everybody, of course, is going hog wild for the white. So I've assembled today assembled i went to chrono and i have some uh um you know alternatives to the white one and the white one is actually on chrono already because of course the flippers are out doing what they do best and that's getting somehow getting the, to the watches before real people do and then selling them at a profit you know why because they're scumbags listen if you have a watch that you don't wear sell it no problem there's no problem with Buying a watch that you think you're going to love, or even even once in a blue moon making a watch for an investment. That's fine. It's just capitalism, and it's fine. But when you make it your business and you make it a habit and you just, you're like, it's like scalping. It's like scalping. I'm looking for my rig so I can clean my glasses. But I clean everything with that stupid thing, my camera lenses and my stuff. And I'm using my orange one, which really needs to be. I was, I took my bikes apart this morning. I should have trimmed my mustache while I was at it. Um, and uh, WD 40 to all my chains and my pedals because I use those clip lock pedals. They're called SPDs by Shimano. They're the ones where you spe wear the special shoes, you put your foot in and you go click and then you click out. Um, and those, you know, been out, they've been outside all winter, covered, yes, but, you know, stuff gets in there and there's a little bit of rust going on. So I did that to get rid of it. Um, so, yeah. So let's see what's going on here. JBB says, actually, he's having pizza, pasta, and wine, a lot of wine. I actually saw him drinking beer, which I don't see him drinking beer very often. I know once in a blue, I mean, I've had a beer with him, uh, but it's very rare that he drinks beer. Very rare. But pizza and beer, got to say, it's a great combination. Hello, James. What's up, Dunkin' Donut Dirkster? Hope everyone's having a great day. I hope you're having a great day, too. This is the place where you go when you want to have a nice time and... uh Forget about all the bullshit because, you know, why do that? Awesome Pollen is here. Hey, y'all. Hey to you. Ray, Ray, there he is. Dirk, Dean, howdy. Howdy to you with your green square. Uh, was that SpongeBob, but a green version? Dean asks, Ray, Ray, you should be double streaming. Are you guys double streaming? I didn't even look to see if he's still on there. Let me take a peeky poo. Is he on there? It's all right. I don't care. Uh, Yeah, he's in there live. Let me see, take a look, see who he's with. He's, he's with Elton. And they're having steak because he can't live without steak. Is that steak or pasta? I'll tell you though, if I was in if I was in Milan, I would be having risotto. Wouldn't you? Isn't that what you get? I saw the other guy was having cacio pepe, and that's not something you have in Milan. That's something you have in Roma, because that is a Roman dish. That is a dish a la romana, cacio e pepe. Um, and every time I've been to Rome, I've had Cacio e Pepe, and it's the best. Yeah, it looks good. And I have San Pellegrino on the table, some uh, oils and some wines. It's nice. You know, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll jump on one of these trips eventually and uh, do some rebel streaming of my own. <laughs> Ray Ray says, I was getting hungry watching the other fella, so came over here to quell my hunger. Uh, what time is it in Ireland right now? It's up there. It's like 10 o'clock, right? Uh, west of Ireland should have its own time zone because you're in the Atlantic Ocean where you are pretty much. Uh, so yeah, I'm not worried about that. Um, rebel stream. And these are terms I don't even know because I'm so not interested in all that stuff. You know, I just worked out when my show was going to be and just talked to a couple of people we know early on a year ago or whatever and said, uh, is five to six good for you guys? You know, because you want to be you want to be a good neighbor. You want to keep your hedges trim, your grass cut, and a lawnmower available for a good lend or some some shearers. 
um, being a good neighbor is nice. I mean, unfortunately, I can't be one, but I can be one to other neighbors. <laughs> I've tried to be. Um, this is the very last plastic bottle of uh, Diet Coke I will ever buy. I know I will quit the Diet Coke. I've heard it all. I know. I'm a drug addict. What can I say? Uh, because I watched a whole documentary on um, recycling in the United States and found out that it's mostly bullshit. It was on the most reputable show, a new show on American soil, which is CBS Sunday morning. Um, it's really great journalism, really great stories, exposés, uh, profiles, etc. It's a very unbiased kind of thing. And there was a whole breakdown on how, you know, so I put my, I have two bags in my kitchen, one's for plastic, one's for paper and cardboard and stuff. And then I take them down and I sort them and I put them in their, their receptacles thinking I'm doing the right thing for my planet. Turns out the garbage men, they showed footage of the garbage men taking all the stuff and just dumping it in the back of the truck with everything else. And then they showed like less than 3% of your plastic waste actually gets recycled. And they said that little, is it on here? Let me see if I could find it. Yeah, this thing, this logo, this, um, this, come on, come on phone. This thing right here, which is a re the official recycling logo. And when you see that, it says empty and replace cap. Please put in proper receptacles for recycling. It turns out that this is clickbait. It's not real at all. Now, I know in Europe they have very stringent rules and regulations about uh, the implementation of recycling and how important it is to Europe. Uh, the United States behind the ball on so many levels, and I couldn't believe I was so horrified. So, um, because this is made from from petroleum products and all that kind of crap, I decided that uh, any kind of bottles that I buy from here on out, this was the last one. I had a pack of eight. It's the last one. I am going to buy cans and or glass, and that's it. No more plastic. I've had it with the freaking plastic because I don't want to be part of the problem. You know, maybe you could too. Let's let's all be not a part of the problem, you know? The awesome Palman says, link for Jake from State Farm. State Farm is there. I don't know why they replaced the Jake. They're, the other Jake was like a dumpy guy. And now they have this new Jake who's got 50 million commercials. And that's not Jake. Because Jake was Jake for five years. And then all of a sudden they replaced the Jake. And he's all over the place. For those of you not in the United States of America, he's the spokesperson for... Uh, an insurance company. And of course, insurance is mostly bullshit. Franco Fiori says, upvote. Hey, all you got to do is give us a little thumbs up on the thing, on the channel, and say some chats after the show. You loved it. You hated it. Dirk's new haircut is really bad. Shave off the beard, which I'm definitely doing like within the next couple of days because I think I've had it. It's getting hot in New York. And I think the mountain man look is uh, finished. A little double espresso. To keep me on my toes for you smarty pantses, because you're all here. Carolyn Martin says, Dirk, I've never loved you more than I do right now. Ban plastic. Ban fucking plastic. It's got to go. It is the it is the scourge of the planet when you see the amounts. Now, when we were in Croatia, 2016, you know, because um, Paul's half Croatian and his dad's family is from Croatia. A beautiful place called Vela Luka, which is an island off on the Dalmatian coast. Uh, and we were there. And we saw this, we got hooked on those bracelets that are made out of ocean plastic stuff that people actually go out and skim the, the plastic off the top of the ocean and they turn them into like bracelets. And we were wearing them. We bought a whole bunch of them and gave them away as gifts and stuff to, to figure out a way to do something with this absolutely horrific pandemic of trash. There's too many, first of all, there's too many people on the planet. What was the name of that movie? Does anybody remember it was a, uh, uh, it was Julianne Moore and Clive Owen, I believe. And like, no one could get pregnant anymore. They did something where people could never, we have there's too many, there's too many people. There's too many people in the world. And we're using ton, tons of plastic and we're wrecking the place. It's just, it's, it's horrific. This, I highly, uh, I highly recommend you seek this out. It was last week's CBS Sunday morning and it was a whole thing. 
and there's this amazing Indian American woman, like India um, Indian Amer uh, American woman, who's now part of the government, and she's really trying to show the fraud and all the stuff that's going on with recycling and all these companies that are full of crap. And it's a shame because you see that logo, you know, and I look for that logo on stuff, and I go, okay, this is recyclable, yay. Turns out they don't do it. The garbage men just throw it in the back of the truck, and that is really freaking horrible. Boston Collector. Hey, Boston Collector. Happy Speedy Tuesday. You wearing your Speedy today? I'm sure you are. The awesome Powen. I agree. Microplastics are terrible. It's just we're killing all the birds, all the sea life, all the... And I've always said this about the sea, you know, when we go out and we take marlins, all these beautiful creatures that are just minding their own business and we, because we're horrible, go out there and just ruin them. Uh, we're doing it from home. We're doing it with our plastic and it's terrible. Buckley. Hey, Buckley. Hello. Dirk got the fresh fade and beard cut. I got, the, I trimmed the beard down on the side as I lost a couple of pounds. So I was like, I might as well, you know, trim that down. The beard goes when, when Dirk gets to 155 pounds and I'm about 10 pounds off from that right now. So, uh, once that's gone, then the beard's gone. Cause otherwise I'll just look like a fat fuck. <laughs> you know, just get a, gotta do those exercises. Kegels for your chin. Tobster McDonkey, everyone's favorite right-wing pundit. Here he is on my show, as he should always be. The problem with plastic is not coming from the USA. Well, we know this, my friend. It's Asia. And all these third-world countries that use river streams and the oceans as their sanitation systems because they don't have one. Well, of course, you know, these are underdeveloped. Well, no, they're not even underdeveloped countries. They do it. I mean, everybody talks about how much they want to go see India. I would go to India in a hyperbaric chamber. I would love to see the Taj Mahal and all that stuff. But like they float their dead in the Ganges and people while people are bathing in it. So you're literally bathing with soap and a dirty rag. And there's like funeral pyres floating past you. They float their dead in it. Yeek. Evolution kids. Have you heard about it? Stop doing things like that. Um, yeah, I mean... I have to say, uh, other than Japan, that part of the world, I, I hope it holds zero interest to me travel wise. I'm not really interested in much, much of that food. There's a lot of weird beasts that get eaten there. Not into it culturally. This doesn't speak to me the way like Italian or, you know, European culture speaks to me. I mean, I, it just doesn't. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying what interests you. Like anybody see the finale of uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Overall, not a great season. End was pretty shitty, but there was a thing where um, Larry David gives away the fact that his ex-wife doesn't like Mexican food and she's embarrassed because she sounds racist. <laughs> Tobe, you love that one, right? It sounds racist that you don't like Mexican food. I happen to love Mexican food, uh, but uh, Chinese food I don't eat. I do love Japanese food, but I like the vegetable rolls and the avocado rolls and the shinko pickle. You know what it is about Japanese food? It's very clean, like them. That country is so, so incredibly clean. Um, the food is clean. You feel, uh, you feel, it feels fresh as long as it's fresh. I don't know about the fish part because I don't eat fish, but uh, I, everybody says the same thing to me. Plus, I love wasabi mustard and anything that will blow my brains out. <laughs> Tobe says, I don't use plastic because it's bad for you and I don't throw shit in the ocean either i don't litter in any way and you know what i do i'm gonna get you're gonna read the headlines one day that um a new york man was found murdered or attacked because if when i see people litter throw things out of their car or on the subway or whatever i go and i pick it up and i hand it back to them i go oh i think you dropped something and i the reactions i've had are usually, oh, wow, I'm so sorry, because they're mortified that I did that to them. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I did that. Yeah, you did. Uh, but a couple of times, I bad like, who the fuck you think you're talking to? My blah, 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 blah. And they get all in my face. I'm like, well, you're a litter bug. And you know what litter bugs should do? You should go to jail, because you're bad. You want to know why the, you complain that the city looks like shit? Look at these subways. If you see the subway tracks, New York's a mess. New York, this looks like the New York I grew up in. Filthy, dim, excrement, crap everywhere. It's just a mess. The subway tracks are filled with litter. People actually have ranty Tuesday, huh? People actually like eating. First of all, anyone who eats on the subway is disgusting. You don't eat. in. Blech. They're eating, and then they take their stuff, and there's a trash can right there, and they throw it on the tracks. What? What? 
what would prompt anybody to think I'll just crumple it up or my cup? There's cups galore. And listen, Dunkin' Donuts used to be good when I was a kid. Dunkin' Donuts is terrible now. It's always Dunkin' Cups. Dunkin' Donuts cups on the subway tracks. I always, I've I have millions of pictures of them. I take pictures of that stuff because I'm so infuriated by litter bugs. Litter bugs drive me bananas. And one day somebody's going to beat the shit out of me. Franco Fiore says, children of men. Wasn't that great? And here's a great, ready for this, Franco? The hotel that they go and hide out in, in that movie, it's like a motel -y looking thing. It's literally, I'm not kidding you, four blocks from where I'm sitting right now. It's on Vernon Boulevard and the 59th Street Bridge, right? There's an underpass that goes under the bridge to go to like the Astoria area of New York. There, now it's fancy. It's called the Revel now, and it's a kind of a nightclub-y fancy joint. Uh, but it was at one time very skeezy. And that was filmed there. And I remember when they were filming that movie, I, I had a dog then. I had my beautiful beloved Dingo. And um, who's on my desk? She's on my desk. I'm looking at her big giant urn right now. I'll take a picture of you, Carolyn. It looks like something from the, the Roman times. Um, so yeah, Children of Men. That's a great movie. I haven't seen that in so long. I want to see it. Ray, Ray, my loyalty being tested. Shh, way more fun. Of course it's more fun, you know, because they're not going to say you sexy devil and stuff like that. They're not going to say that. They're going to be like, oh, this pasta is delicious and... Right, it's a bunch of Irish guys sitting at a table, right? They're gonna be like, Oh, right, the spear is glorious, blah, blah 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 blah. And I'm just gonna say, Stay here, you sexy beast. You, Bert Dundee, the only saying is a good one. I have five bins to save the planet, yet most of the rest of the world are still shitting in the streets. Isn't it true? I mean, it's so true. You know, I was explaining to um, my, my elderly neighbor who, you know, I kind of take care of her and because she has nobody in the world and she lives downstairs and she's under the threat of eviction because of the, you know, who. And um, so tomorrow we're having a big meeting. Uh, she didn't know about the Sinestere thing. Like I'm wearing my watch on my left hand now during the shows because of this whole new contraption. Let me get rid of this, this, this whole new, well, very convenient and very lovely. I mean, it's very nice. Pop screen, pop screen, pop screen. Isn't that amazing? Um, because I'm definitely going to bang it. And if I do it to the, this is, you know, Hesalite, big fucking deal. But if I bang the green sapphire crystal on my Milgauss, then first of all, it'll, it, it'll be headline news. <laughs> you guys will all rat on me. She ain't guess what happened, which is something I don't want to happen. And I won't. So I'm wearing my, and it feels very, very odd to wear a watch on my left hand because I'm a uh, left-handed guy. So I gravitate towards this. Uh, I got a nice letter from the Mirage people. So I just want to say, listen, once again, they're not paying me, but look at this action. Look at this. I do. I love it. They, well, they gave me a bunch, you know, so that's kind of, is this a paid sponsorship? I don't think it is, but you know, as a thank you, they gave it to me and, uh, I can't, I can't tell you how much I, I use these every freaking day. I haven't used the big one yet. I don't know if I will. Cause it's, you know, I don't have six watches. Um, but it's so beautiful and it smells really good, even though it's leather. <laughs> what can I say about that? Um, hey, McAllen drinker, want to send a pic? What's the email? Well, I can help you out right there. It's basherdirk at gmail.com. That's B A S H E R D I R K at gmail.com. Basherdirk. You share with me, I share with the world. And I have, look at this, I've got great folks from people. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bad yes. Angelo, you guys are sending me some great shots. Thank you. I'm very excited because I love to have pictures for you guys. I love to show all your stuff because it's what makes the world go around, you know, what you like to wear and what everybody else likes to wear. You know what? Watch I see more than, oh, can we talk about the freaking Movado for a second? I mean, why would anybody want to talk about a Movado? But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it. Hold on. I'm going to get it online. I can't get away from this stupid watch. It's every single commercial, every single commercial on YouTube is this watch. And like, I, you know, like, I don't give a shit about Movado. I know like they were considered like something big at one time, right? So this watch, the Movado Bold Quest, every freaking commercial, I finally hit the little information thing and said, block this ad. I don't want to see it anymore. It's just like, you know, 
eh, you know, it's not a, not a watch any of us are really interested in. It's got a very interesting integrated bracelet. It's a very nice dial color. Of course, it's very, very thin. Um, I'm assuming this thing is quartz, right? Should I look on this thing? It's look at this. It's 600 bucks. Is this quartz? I mean, that's a nice looking deployment in there. Right. Uh, is it quartz? I mean, I'm sorry that I'm talking about Movado, but I just, I kept saying, I have to say this on the uh, Swiss quartz movement. Okay. You know what that means? Not that quartz is the devil. Cause I wouldn't mind an oyster quartz or one of those old, cool old quartzes from back in the day. I don't have, I don't have that problem with it, but you know, for that stuff, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Quartz is not what most of us are about. Mm -hmm. It killed a lot of brands. It really, really, and truly did. Uh, so McAllen drinker, thank you so much. I hope you send that picture. I want you to send the picture. I love the fact that you've got the Speedmaster professional right there. Very nice. It is right. I can't tell from here, but it looks like it. A heavy driver, keep driving on down the road. Elton says there is a future. Oh, Elon. Sorry. I'm thinking Elton. Elon says there is a future low birth crisis. I know you don't like or believe him. I I am not on the complete hater list with that guy. Um, my problem with him is that, did you notice that people on the spectrum are not, not that there's a pr problem with that, but people on the spectrum now, like uh, what's his face from uh, Facebook and this guy, they're now uh, the, the smartest, richest people in the world, but you know, they have very bad social skills and you know, Elon Musk is a very odd person and he does a lot of odd things. And here's the one thing that I have to say as if, as a amateur, uh, amateur astrophysicist and uh, space exploration uh, whore is that Mars is a dead rock. It's a waste of everybody's breath. It has no magnetic core. It has absolutely no magnetic field. So there's, <laughs> forget it. There's no atmosphere because there's no magnetic field. It is being pummeled with radiation. There's nothing, if there was ever life on there, it's long since dead. So we need to forget about wasting. Well, listen, it's his money to waste, but you know, he tries to finagle money from elsewhere too. Mars is a dead rock. It's a waste of everybody's time. And it is not our nearest neighbor. Our nearest neighbor is Venus, which technically is way far further into the habitable zone than Mars is. Unfortunately, it's got the big greenhouse effect, which I think with current technologies and the way the way we can do things with uh you know like the ideals of terraforming maybe we just need to just blow up a couple of things there and uh just expel all the carbon dioxide from its uh, atmosphere and try to get that place going if we're going to ruin our own place let's hope we we don't do that but it just makes no sense to me at all because it does have except it rotates the opposite way did everybody know that venus rotates the wrong way around the wrong way to us anyway um i believe him sometimes i, I saw the cyber truck and it's weird uh bert says old vasilio singapore is awesome uh they just that you know what listen mazel tov i'm so glad that it does um there's nothing there i want to see nothing there's nothing i'm interested in. just it doesn't do it for me um like, I really want to go to Bora Bora, and it's really far away. And every time I've thought about it, first of all, no one wants to go. Paul does not want to go. It's too far. It's 28 hours away. And we're not beach people. Uh, but I guess I could, as I get older, I could learn to be a beach person. They have, like, a really nice hotel there. They have uh, a Four Seasons, and they have a St. Regis, and it looks great. But, you know, you get bored even with nice hotels. you got to do something after a while, and uh, they don't have that much to do there. I would love to see uh, Australia and New Zealand very much, and Tasmania. That's on my list. I would love to see that. I would love to see uh, Buenos Aires, because um, apparently that's like going to Europe, but in South America. I'd love to see that. Um, number one on my list, travel-wise, and it has been for a long time, and now I can officially cross it off, St. Petersburg in Russia. I've always wanted to see the Amber Room. Um, I've always wanted to go there, see the Hermitage. You know, I don't think that uh, as long as our dear friend Vladimir is in power and that's going to be you know, forever, um, I don't think in our lifetime we'll be traveling to Russia anytime soon. And there was a point in time a couple of years ago before the pandemic where we were getting some offers from uh, Russian promoters to play there. And I was like, oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait. It just didn't work out. 
Angelo Minichello, hold on one second, hold on, agreed on better procedures on plastics, but I have two plastic valves in my heart. That's a whole different story, my friend. And the whole top end of my aorta as well. Wow, Angelo. So kind of necessary, at least for me. Listen, you're not going to be recycling that anytime soon. And I will tell you uh, another thing about that is my father-in-law has a taver. And here's another thing. I'll give this away. Why shouldn't I? Um, Paul has a uh, bicuspid valve, meaning when you got in our hearts, there are three flaps leading to the heart from the aorta. Three flaps for blood flow. Two of his, when he was in, in utero, fused. So he has a bicuspid valve, it's called. So some point in the future, um, he's going to have to have a taver or some kind of valve. So uh, read a lot about that stuff. I mean, obviously, isn't that a great thing? I'm talking about that, Diet Coke bottles, which are just... You know, it's really funny, and this is going to sound gross, but I had double espresso. I'm using the same cup, and you know what it's going to be like? It's going to be like a cafe-flavored Diet Coke. I think I invented something new. It's actually very, very good. Topes just says, Sam, I want to go to Japan. The rest of Asia is a pass. Completely, totally. After what my uh, my dear friend who I used to work with at my restaurant, she was from Malaysia, she told me some stories about some things and i was like oh no 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 she goes no you don't want to go there i was like i don't uh japan however is a great place for rock and roll it's the cleanest place in the world it's it's spotless maybe switzerland is cleaner but they have laws like if you litter and stuff you go to jail i love that if you throw i think if you litter i think you should get arrested they should at least, at least write, write you up Tobes just says, listen, I'm Mexican and my Mexican friends and family are more racist than anybody. Else. This is this is very interesting. So my barber is Colombian and uh, man, he was trumping today. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, wow. Interesting. You know, because uh, we were talking about um, the borders in, in America and what a waste of time it is as far as I'm concerned with the Mexican border. I don't think we should give a shit about that at all because I've never ever, and I worked in a Mexican restaurant for 24 years. I bartended there and I met people who worked there that were legal, illegal, every single one of them, the hardest working person I've ever met in my entire life. None of them were on the dole. And if none of that, there was no handout. They didn't want handouts. They wanted to go clean the toilets or clean the machines or scrub the kitchen. These were people that had four jobs. I've never ethically these people have so much pride. It's it's incredible, and their 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 ethics are outrageous. They are family, family, family first, and it's like that's not who we need to worry about. We need to worry about all the people that get in here on their special visas because we made some kind of dirty deal with you know where, and they let them in, and then they buy everything. That's who you have to worry about because every single Mexican person I've ever met that I've worked with has come here, learned how to speak English, integrated into society, and still are able to retain uh, their heritage. And that's a beautiful thing. And that, my friends, is America. The people now who are coming in here with their special visas that they buy or that are arranged for them, and you, I don't, you know who they are, they are coming in here. They're not learning the language. They are buying everything up, and they don't want anything to do with America. They're not integrating and being Americans. They're not doing it at all. God, I'm ranting today. It's terrible. So I agree, Tope. Uh, try wasabi and mayo with potato chips. Dude, I've tried everything with mayo. <laughs> Talking about heart valves, I better go to a cardiologist soon because I love mayonnaise, and that's probably why the reason why I can never stay at a steady 150 because I'll eat a mayonnaise sandwich. You know what my favorite sandwich is? I take really salty pretzels, and I crush them, and I mix them with Hellman's mayonnaise and Put them on toast and make a, a pretzel mayonnaise sandwich. Wasabi with mayo, ketchup with mayo, Dijon mustard with mayo is out of this world. French's mustard with mayo, everything with mayo. I'm down. You got me. <laughs> Link for Mexican racist. You know, listen, you know, um, yeah, he, so my my so my barber is amazing guys. He's been the guy that I didn't the, when I had really long hair, he had moved away. He went back to Colombia for like four years. So he moved back. And I said, why? And he said, because of the government bullshit. He didn't want to deal with Columbia, what was going on there. Uh, he's um, he's an extremely, uh, it's not, I wouldn't say racist, but he's extremely conservative. 
Tubster McDunk says, look up John Stossel's piece on the recycling industry. It's a total BS scam. It's even more green to send everything to landfill. I have a funny story about uh, Dean Supersticker. I don't want to miss out. Dean, Dean Supersticker. Looking for what one to give you. Uh, let's give you the... Oh. I love how that one's supposed to be serene, and it's not. It's the loudest one that we have. Thank you, Dean, for that. Uh, John Stossel. So many years ago, I'm in Washington, D.C., and because of my mother-in-law, I told you she, she works for a company that has a special deal with very nice hotels. So we're in Georgetown, and we're checking into the Four Seasons Hotel, and guess who's checking in right in front of us? John Stossel. For those of you who don't know, John Stossel is a very long-time uh, course, news correspondent, and I guess he was an anchor at some point. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but Don, he's he's a prestigious kind of guy in this business. And I have never seen anybody of his tax bracket wearing the shoes of a drifter's corpse. This guy had a pair of like blue dark navy blue loafers that were ripped on both sides the heel was completely missing it was like all worn down and it had tassels on them and both of the tassel ends were missing and i remember thinking to myself is he married does he have a wife wouldn't she buy him some shoes very strange some people are just slobs he couldn't make it on watch fashion police you know Ray Ray says, merchant shipping has increased by 300% in the last 20 years. Merchant shipping. Is that because of uh, Amazon? Buckley, Duncan people are trash. Starbucks people are douches. Everybody knows the deli for $1 is the way to go. You know, like, and I, I mean, I drink coffee at home. I very rarely, if ever, drink coffee out. I don't, I don't do to-go coffees. To-go, and I had, had this conversation earlier with very special friend who you you all know i'm not going to say who it is <clears throat> when i first started going to italy 25 30 years ago there was no such thing as takeaway takeout did not exist you went to the cafe bar and at that time it was like a half i don't know how many lira it was it was like 50 cents for a beautiful coffee it didn't mean it could be macchiato cappuccino double espresso it could whatever and it came in a ceramic usually branded by the coffee brand and you'd stand at the at the counter and you pay and then they bring you your coffee and then they bring you something like usually it, usually they give you a glass of water, especially if you get a double like a cafe dopio do, double espresso. They usually give you that. Um, but now in the last 10 years, I see people walking around with styrofoam cups, paper cups, plastic. You know, once that boba tea shit makes it to Italy, like um, then I'm going to have to just kill myself because those big giant like big gulp cups, these giant Americans love super size. So like pink liquid, red liquid, some kind of sugary drink crap. When they wanted to put the tax on the sugar in New York, I was all for it. I was like, do it. Has anybody's ever been Kmart or Walmart and went down the soda aisle and you see what's going down there? Sometimes like these double, these big wide aisles in order to get through, you know, like the supermarket, sometimes you'd have to do this because of Naomi and her fat kids and they're because they're all buying gigantic grape sodas and orange sun-kissed sodas and disgusting things. It's horrible. Scotty H, Lord H. Ta, 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 ta. I also hate when people with no physical impairment park in handicap. That is just the scam of the century. And it's, I don't drive. So obviously I couldn't have ever done that, nor would I. Uh, but like, you know, I have to live with somebody who's constantly bitching and screaming and moaning about parking. Because I live in a neighborhood that used to be, we used to park up front. It was our spot for years and years. Now this place is overrun with hoodlums and everybody's you have to sometimes sit and wait or he does has to sit and wait for hours to try to wait for people to leave the restaurants or whatever they're doing i understand that parking is a problem and it's a psychological mind game and i'm so glad to not be a part of it i probably wouldn't be able to be a part of it because i think i would probably be one of those people that suffer from road rage i think i would get very upset about it and uh, i would get out of my car and 
You know, I'd be Karen. I'd be on YouTube. Karen, not Dirk, Karen. <laughs> they would start calling the guys Dirks because <laughs> it would be that bad. Melly C is here. Hello, Melly C. Well, better late than never, darling. And we're going to see. Do you have any pictures for us today? Send them to me. You know who I am. I am basherdirk at gmail.com. And we love your pictures. Send one of that your beautiful kitty cat because we love those pictures. We love them. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, I missed a bunch of these. Here we go. Uh, Magic Mike is here. I haven't seen you in a while. Yes, but by studying Mars, we understand life on Earth better. Why? Because of erosion that erased the first billion years here. I mean, true, there's that interesting, that, but going there, I don't see the point of that. Just send machines there, get samples, take them back. I don't see sending people there. And then they're talking about colonizing Mars. I mean, that Martian movie, that the science of that was, of course, ridiculous. Um, do you ever watch any of those debunk ones where they get like some of these NASA smarties and some fascinating people and they rip that shit apart? Um, I enjoyed that movie, I have to say. And I'm, Ridley Scott hasn't really made a good movie in a really long time. Uh, Papiti. Yeah, that's uh, that's where you have to fly into in Tahiti in order to get to Bora Bora. You have to fly from here, fly to the West Coast, fly to Papiti, and then stay overnight because there's no night flights. And then you have to wait till the next morning to puddle jumper over there. Uh, my sister's here, Kerry Kennedy, Japan. You know, Japan is, listen, those are very elegant, um, extremely. Uh, and when you think about, you know, the United States, we're the only people that ever dropped a nuclear bomb on anybody, and we dropped it on them. And, you know, apparently before then, you know, it was a little bit different in Japan. You know, they had kamikazes and they had all these kind of crazy things going on. The empire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can't believe Every single time I've ever had to deal with Japan, with my band, and, you know, first of all, when your record gets released in Japan, you would not believe. We've always, for the most part, sent our art to Japan because they do such a beautiful job, exacting job. They make it 10 times better than whatever you sent them. They're very thorough. They make really great musical instruments. They make a lot of great stuff. It's quality. You know, and then you get on a boat and you go across the sea and everything's made like crap. So who knows? Oh, Angelo had a bicuspid as well. We should talk. Send me an email, basherdirk.com. So because, you know, that's something that we're going to have to deal with down the road, down the road. Um, yeah. So I'm curious to where you had it done, who tell me how long ago you did it. Tell me all that stuff. Send me an email. You know, you know, my email address. Send it. Melly C says, I've been an exchange student in Japan. Beautiful country, polite and gorgeous people. They're, they're stunning and their style is outrageous. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, some of those, like when I saw that movie, um, uh, what was the one with the, uh, uh, Sofia Coppola directed it, right? And it was with, um, who's the beautiful girl? God, I can't remember anybody's name. Uh, she's married to Colin Jost. The one she was very young. They're in a hotel and they're bored. The whole thing. That hotel was sick. Um, Scarlett Johansson. Lost in translation. See, yeah, I got it myself. Hey, Vaughn, not Mexicans in this headline. Migrants flood New York City Hall in protest of losing luxury hotel rooms who don't want to go to a shelter. They weren't getting luxury hotel rooms. What they were getting was uh, they were getting closed, dilapidated. Uh, they were getting the Roosevelt Hotel. They were getting like a lot of these grand dame hotels that were under bad management for really time and closed. They were being put up in former luxury hotels. That that isn't true. Believe me, it's not. And I know the inside out of that. Um, I mean, it's probably nicer than getting put in a tent. You know, listen, I, I'm who knows what's going to happen with us with Russia, who knows what's going to happen with us with Israel, you know, because they want to, they want to send bombs to Iran. And if they do that, if Netanyahu is allowed to do that, you know, Biden, who, you know, whatever, whatever you think of him, he said, don't do that. Like the wisest thing he ever said. And he also said, we're not going to get involved in any kind of military action. Just letting you know, we support you, but we're not getting involved. Cause if we do, then somebody's going to send something wicked, you know, something wicked this way comes. That's going to come and we're going to get, you know, in the, in the, right in the microscopic hit of, of all this rest of this shit. And who knows, maybe one, uh, one or all of us will be looking for like some country that still survives like Canada and ask, ask them for, you know, lodging. I mean, you, you have to wonder, you know, walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. 
you know i mean i don't know how other how how it's, it's very easy to go away yeah in my fucking country you goddamn freeloaders it's very easy i know that you're not saying that I know that. I'm just saying in general. I know a lot of people like, can you believe these fucking people come here and they take advantage of all our shit? These are these are refugees, man. They're looking for something, something to get a leg up. And in every single group of people, there's always going to be a couple of bad actors, but we cannot, and it, I think as humans, it's probably very, very bad for us to single out any one particular people as being bad people, bad groups of people. There's bad people in every in every group. Hey, we've had a couple of bad people. Very few, though, because the bastards are fabulous people. Yeah, that one troll. And like, I just let him spew, because what is he going to do? Just go ahead. You know what? I have all these nice people to talk to. I don't need to talk to that guy. But uh, yeah, so it's not really luxury hotel. They're very dilapidated. And it's a shame. The Roosevelt Hotel or the Roosevelt, depending if you're Archie Bunker or not. Um, El uh, Delino Roosevelt. Um, it's a beautiful building. And uh, a friend of mine stayed there before it closed. I remember his paint was peeling off the wall. It was pretty bad. The plumbing was a mess. The toilet was dirty. It was just, it was bad. <laughs> so they're putting them in whatever there's a couple of like shithole like real shithole uh, motels in in long island city and in, in new york and they're in there too one of them's called like home sweet home and it just looks like uh home rape home it looks it looks like a murder central hitesh is here hey hitesh good to see you hey i got my washing machine delivered and installed wow i would kill for a washing machine I mean, I love doing laundry. I find it therapeutic. I think I've said that on the channel before. I really like to. Mr. Bad Gas, the triangle's my favorite, but we need some cowbell. I know. Uh, I'll work. You know what? I'll get, I'll get some cowbell working tonight. After tonight's show, I'll go find a cowbell, and I'll use that. And I probably you. So you, you want the triangle, right? F five US dollars. Thank you so much for that. And so let me. You want the good triangle, right? I mean, there's just the stupid one, and then there's the big one. Oh, uh, yeah, this guy. Cha -cha -cha. I love that one. Uh, thank you so much for that. I, I hate this when I, because I have to hit a lot of buttons to make that stuff happen. And then when I go back to the chat, it never puts me back where I left off, which is annoying because then I got to scroll down and go, where am I? So that was right there, Miss Megan. Rufus is here. Hello, Rufus. They say the show, The Expanse, is the most accurate show set in space. I watched The Expanse. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, it's interesting. They say it's the most accurate. We don't even know what's accurate anymore because now they're saying James Webb Telescope has officially said that Big Bang is not real anymore because they found a galaxy that's 30 billion years old. The universe is supposed to be 13.5 billion years old. That's when the Big Bang, everything got created, and then they found a galaxy that's 30 billion. So you know what? Maybe everything's just God, and we should forget about science. Maybe. Heavy driver. I tried the expanse, but it was boring as fuck. Um, huh. I tried for all mankind, and I thought it was boring as fuck. And if you know a couple of things about Dirk, he loves the early 60s. He loves, like, you know... Uh, you know, Corvettes, NASA, anything with vintage NASA, anything. Uh, and man, I thought that show was just written like the uh, like the OC, you know, like uh, Ocean. What is that? The Orange County. Right. Um, it felt like uh, Beverly Hills 90210. I only watched half of the first season and I walked away from it. Uh, I generally give new shows about two or three episodes before I turn them off. And uh, that was one of them. And that looked like it was going to be right up my street. I hate that guy. That's the star. He was on house of cards. I don't know. His name is like Kimmerman. I don't, I, I don't know. I didn't like that guy. He's smug. I hate smug, I hate smug. And he was smug. Um, the expanse. I have to remember. Did I see that? Let me see. Let me see the expanse. Did I see that? I know that the expanse was a place. Oh, right. When is this? This was when, when did this come out? The expanse 2015. Who did this show? I don't recognize any of the names. Oh, it stars Thomas Jane. I'm watching that. I love Tom Jane. Do you guys remember hung? That was one of the funniest shows ever. It was on HBO. If you're in Europe, watch this. It's about a guy 
This is going to sound a little crass, but it's worth it. It's about this guy, and he's married to Anne Hayes, who was a great actress. Uh, she's dead now. Rest her soul. Uh, and she was crazy. But everybody says she was brilliant. So it's about this guy, and he's a high school gym coach, and he's down on his luck, and his wife left, left him for a dentist, and uh, he's going to, like, self-help classes and trying to figure stuff out. And he hooks up with, like, this kind of ugly, nerdy broad in the class, and he has one redeeming quality, and it's the title of the show, so she decides to become his pimp, <laughs> and he becomes a gigolo. Really funny show. Uh, Vasilios P says he loves Japan culture. I have like, you know what I'll do? I'll go find some of these Japanese magazines that uh, my band was luckily lucky to be featured in. You can't believe the quality of the paper and the ink and the photography. It's just mesmerizing. Uh, I get like Freddie Mercury collected Japanese art and I could see why. Uh, every time I hear big in Japan, I think of Tom Waits. Yeah, me too. That's funny. So do I. <laughs> Uh, heavy driver, Japan, serious population crisis, lowest birth rate of modern industrialized countries. Yeah, because they, they, because they know what they're doing now, right? Like they're having, like then people aren't even having kids and they're so, their science is amazing. Uh, it's very cool music too. Holy shit. Have you ever seen some, they love rock by the way. You see these 14-year-old kids and they can play like Jeff Beck and Richie Blackmore and they're amazing. Amazing. Travis Watts, join late. Hey, Travis. Welcome. Better late than ever. Listen, I'm good. It's gonna be I'm gonna go a little bit late because I've been yakking on and I didn't even show pictures yet. And I have a bunch. And Melly C just dropped his picture. We'll get into that uh in just two minutes. Uh Del Boy Z A. Well, hey, better late than never. For one says Japan is one country I'd love to check out. It's a beautiful place. And they have those super fast magnetic trains. Guess what? I got a fever and the only prescription is more cowbell. A hundred percent agree on Japanese made instruments, drums, particularly pearl drums, Yamaha drums, Yamaha drums. Listen, all the best drummers in the world. You know, they, a lot of them play that DW brand. Now that's uh, even Neil Peart did that, but the Yamaha recording series drums, as much as I hate their pianos, cause I, I don't like them. Um, their drums are amazing. And uh, Adrian Morden from Mr. North, I remember when he finally got his Yamaha kit and he was so happy. Magic Mike, changing the subject. Hey, do it. Have you read the biographies of Desmond Child and Holly Knight? I imagine there'd be anecdotes that you could identify with being a musical child of the 70s, 80s. You know what's really crazy is I have not because Desmond's is brandy new and I have it on hold on the library because that's the thing. I, I have a library card now, so... I digitally download the audiobooks. I met Desmond Child 100,000 years ago. I've never met Holly Knight. These were big. These are two, for people who don't know, um, these are two of the biggest songwriters in of the 70s and 80s. Desmond Child wrote, he got to start with like, uh, he had a band called Desmond Child and Rouge. And I forget the name of their big song. It was big though. And then he wrote, I was made for loving you for kiss. And then he went on to write all like, you give love a bad name. And one, and uh, uh, the other big one, uh, all the big Bon Jovi hits, he was it was a co-write with that guy. Holly Knight worked with Hard and Starship and so many bands. And they were good writers. I think that the other writer is a woman named Diane Warren. I think she's a terrible songwriter. And um, I mean, she just writes stuff I don't get. But uh, I'd like to read. Uh, I think I read Holly Knight's book. It's hard for me to remember because I read everybody's book. I think I did. Um, maybe. I'll have to check and see if it's in my library. It probably is. But Desmond Child, I can't wait to read that. Uh, Big Bang is and always has been a theory. Theory is just a guess. This is very true, Tob. Of course, you're right. Turk, are you sure that's not a sheen in your triangle super chat? Looks like a shirt he would wear. It's not him. As far as I know, as talented as he is, I don't think he plays the triangle. And that's an art. So are the castanets. So are the woodblocks. Hey, Tracy Partridge, she had a lot more talent than you think. Uh, one of my favorite things is reading Japanese whiskey bottle labels, Iron Heart clothes labels, Grand Seiko watch. I mean, Grand Seiko, look at what they do. Uh, I, I don't drink, drink whiskey, as you know, um, but I do have a couple of amazing bottles of uh, Japanese whiskey and soju in my house. And the, the boxes and the labels. And on, I don't think I have one here. Do I have one here? Uh, I did. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. 
Is this it? Is it the, okay, right. Ready? So here's a Japanese copy of one of my, my albums. And it comes with, first of all, they change. You're not going to see the color of the CD, but it's this beautiful jade green because they print it different. And it came with, look at this. It comes with this. Look at this. Look at this. Is this unbelievable? We didn't put this together. They put together like all the songs, a whole story. Somebody wrote a story. I should have this translated because I never did. And then on the back, all the lyrics in Japanese. And the quality of the book is like 10 billion times better than the one we printed. Just the quality of it. Yeah, this is me and my Prince era. Uh, it's so beautiful. Japanese, what can I tell you, man? They, the, the art that goes on in that country is just outrageous. Hey, Carolyn, do they make amazing pens? I bet you that they do. I bet you they have crazy writing instruments there. I don't have the ob obi. The obi is this beautiful strip here. I do have it. I just have it in plastic somewhere because if that gets ruined, it's the, it's just crap. Um, Ray Ray, sorry, I was cheating on you. I'm back. Forgive me. That's okay. Ray Ray. I still love you. I still love you, baby. Uh, Mr. Bad guesses. I love bad translations. Me too. Uh, Iron Heart Jeans label, which I save it acquires because of the 100%. First of all, Japanese selvage denim. It's the only denim I buy. That denim is the wax denim. It's the best quality and they last forever. Google Trend. I have to scan it and do it. Do it that way, right? Um, Heavy Driver says, what's your take on Porcupine Tree? Stephen Wilson revitalized my love of modern rock. I, you know, I know I've heard of them. I don't know who Stephen Wilson is. Is he in that band? I got to say that that kind of music went over my head. I'm not saying I don't like it. I, I couldn't. If they hit me with a truck, if they hit me with the Porcupine Tree van, I wouldn't know it was them. Uh, but I, I should check it out if you think it's good. Since you appreciate people behind the songs, what do you think of the works of the late? I think he was a genius. I think he was an absolute genius. And I actually have his album, Bad for Good, which he sings on. Not the greatest singer in the whole world, but the songs are amazing. And all the songs on that record made it to other people's records later on. I love Jim Steinman. I like anybody that plays piano, orchestrates stuff. I love all that stuff. Look at that. Okay, so let's start it out. Let's start it out with the big guy, Ray Ray. He's got a picture. It's time for the Bastards Gallery, kids. Everybody's favorite part of the show. Ray Ray with his boulevard. We've seen this watch before, but never, never in the context of his extremely hairy masculine wrist. You're very nice looking skin there, Ray Ray. And there's me in the background. That's funny. Let me blow this watch up. Look at that. Look at that dial. I love the 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 uh, punch bowl uh, rehots. I always like them. Reminds me of the Rose Bowl. Beautiful. Is that a one and done there, Ray Ray? Ray Ray kiddo, Mr. Man. Very nice. Thank you, Ray Ray. Oh, this is a great shot. It's from Derek. This is really good. You ready for this, kids? Yeah, was a, he's on an aeroplane. And look at that. You know what he's wearing, right? He's wearing a Milgauss. Uh, amazing. I mean, that's when you want to take pictures of your Milgauss. I just saw a quick one from uh, Freddie. Did you send me a picture, Fred? Did you send me a new picture? Hold on a second. Scotty Love says, getting bashed in a few minutes. Hi, guys and dolls. Only have a few minutes. Dirk is, have some great pics for Freddy, feral king of the local land of my speedy. After a year, he let me pet him. Did you send me a picture? I don't see it. Send, are you going to send it to me right now? I'll, I'll put you I'll put you to the front of the line. Because, you know, you sent me the beautiful one. <laughs> uh, I don't see you. I'm, I'm waiting. Well, send, send it as fast as you can. Oh, we'll send for next week. No, oh, we want it now, Scotty Love. Are you, is that one of the droogs there? It is. Oh, that's the scene. Right? That's. I just watched somebody's countdown of the best Stanley Kubrick movies, and they they put that at like nine. I wouldn't put that at nine. It's a very disturbing film. Um, but number one, they put The Shining. We all know it's two thousand and one, don't we? Don't we all know that it's two thousand and one? Come on. Uh, anyway, 
Thank you, Derek, for that ever. That beautiful. And then Andrew with a picture of Olive. Another shot of Olive looking all coy and feminine and beautiful. You can send it. It's the next week. I do a show every every day. We miss you, Scotty Love. Where are you going? Where are you getting bashed to? Look at Olive. Look at this pose. She's like being all feminine and cute. Thank you, Andrew. And everybody asks me if I, they're all asking me, are, are we making you sad by sending pictures of our cats and our beautiful animals? No, you're not. You're not. It makes me happy. I love to see your love and the, I love to see the ones that you love. Here's some more from Andrew. This is the kids getting it on, right? <laughs> so cute. Look at them. They're having a brawl. I love when they play fight. It's amazing how they know to fight and not hurt each other. Every once in a while, I'd come home and I had Murray and Glaucus, and I'd come home to like a ball, look like a cartoon ball of fur, and then I'd find fur all over the place. And it was always um, Murray that took the licking because Glaucus was a meanie. He wasn't mean, but he was being mean to him. Fargal McDermott with more of the racing Mark II. Thank you, Fergal. Oh God, you know I, you know I have a super watch crush on this thing. I mean, and you know what? And it's funny because this one, this is the Mark II that everybody wants. For all the people that are out there looking for the Mark II, that's the one they want, and you can't get it. It's the expensive one. Oh, look at that. You're a shifty one. Isn't that amazing that he did that? That is incredible with his 861. Look at that. Look at that. For, for those of you who don't know that that did not come with an open case back, he did that because that movement is so beautiful. You know, like underneath the cap, like you open up a Rolex and they're like, nah. I mean, I know that the the newer ones look, they, they're finishing them up, but Omega just always made them look so beautiful. Look at that. That's a sexy beast. I would have done that too because it's your watch, right? So what do you care? All right, it's yours. If you want to modify it, you want to mod, why not? I mean, you have the original one, so who cares? Who cares? I mean, who cares? Why would anybody care? Here's Don, old engineer's watch. Ooh. Let's talk about where it all started, kids. Wow. Looky there. What do you got? Oh, wow. A Waltham. Look at this. Look at that. And what's this thing? Oh, Rodania. Oh, look, that's the real railroad watch, too. Um, I know somebody who has one with a black dial, and it's quite beautiful, too, but totally different bracelet. Look at this thing. Look at that. In gold. Because what else would it be in, right? Isn't that absolutely breathtaking? I don't know. Maybe we should start a trend and start all wearing pocket watches. Would that be cool? You know, have the chain. Be very classy. Show up at Watches and Wonders with like a pin, really nicely fitted suit with like pinstripes or chalk stripes and have, you know, inside your watch pocket, you actually have a pocket watch. I think people would be like, I think you'd be all over the Watches and Wonders news as being like the fashionable person. This is from Ken, and this is a very interesting thing. He has all these dials Look at these, man. Look at the craftsmanship that used to go into stuff. Elgin. I don't know what this one is because I don't see what it doesn't have a name on it. And I can't get to the top. That's as far up as it goes. Oh, that what is going on here? There's some kind of chronograph going on up there. This is this looks very antique and it looks very European. And those are probably real rubies on there. Wow. These don't just look like fascia. They look like they might have movements behind them, right? This might be a dial, but that looks like it's the... Oh, maybe not. I mean, they still have the hands on them. Wow, these are very cool, man. You see, this is cool to have stuff like this. Because everybody's like, this is my, you know, explorer. Which is nice, too. But, you know, that's very cool. Here's Jade. Hey, Jade. Thanks for sending stuff. Very exciting. Ready for this, guys? To one two five. 
Very cool. These are the omegas that people don't know about. They don't know that they exist, and they do, and they're available. You can get them. Look at this. I love this. I know this bracelet is very controversial. It's integrated bracelet. It looks very Gerald Genta, you know. And as far as I know, Gerald Genta never had anything to do with them. I mean, maybe he consulted. The one, two, five. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, you never see that. And of course, why doesn't Omega go back to that? That the, the, their Omega symbol back in the day was way cooler. It kind of looks like the Joker from Batman. I love it. That's the back. Thank you so much. I said more pictures, and there they are. You borrowed that one. That's fine. You could do that. Uh oh, Mister Bad Gas. Here we go. This is what we want to see. Yeah. I had a friend, a customer who used to come into my old job with one of those. And when I called him out on it, he's like, how do you know what this is? <laughs> like, never mind. This is a, this is going to be a, I mean, if it isn't now, it's going to be a super future classic. And I love, I love the, the texture. I love the way they did this. This is a beautiful watch. Look at this beautiful watch. Perfect size for you, man. Perfect. Yeah. Look at that thing. Look at the way they finished their watches. It's amazing. The 1869. Outrageous. I mean, look at that. I mean, listen, this is all, you know, based on the old Lamania 1940s movements that eventually became the 321, 861, 1861. You know, all iterations thereof with different kinds of fits and finishes and changes, you know, because now it's a coax movement. And all of them. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that. That's a treat. Oh boy, got a couple coming in here. Where am I now? Okay, that was Angelo. Hey, Cyberchuck. Oh, wait a second. I thought it only came in silver. Come on now. Hey now. It comes in red. Red with like a like a yellow front. Looks like a taxi cab. Huh. I didn't know it came in colors. And like like Rolex, that thing's sixty one thousand dollars list, but people are paying one hundred fifty thousand for it. Isn't that nuts? I guess they were on the AD list. I guess they were. Wow, that's nuts. Where am I? Cybertruck. Hey, Scott Jones. What do you got going on here? Let's share the screen. Share the screen. It's all I've ever heard. All I ever want from you. Look at that. There you go. Here's a white dial for you. I didn't even get to my white dial page because I was ranting today. That's okay. We could talk about that anytime. Beautiful. Hmm. I think you showed I think I've seen this picture from you before, like when I first started the channel. Am I right? I think I'm right. I think I'm right. Because I remember it. I remember it. McAllen Drinker. Right. Speedy to Columbus Circle. Right. Melly C. What do you got going on? Oh, baby. We, we're all madly in love. You know that, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> nice pen. Uh, and, of course... Timex. Wait till you see what uh, uh, Andrew sent me. It's coming up. Did I didn't miss it, right? I don't think I did. I don't think I did, did I? I got to double check. Beautiful. She loves her peanuts. And I love to show her peanuts on the show. Where did I miss this? Andrew. Oh, yeah. This is a, okay, because it wasn't a picture. Do you know about this? Are you aware of this action? Look at the Timex Coke. You know about this? That's the Mass Marvel. Did you know about this? Well, it's, look at that. That's a Pepsi there. But it also comes in Coke. Or maybe it looks like a Coke there. I want this now. I want this watch right now. Look at that. Who doesn't want that? What a great looking watch. And it's a Timex. It takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. I'm sorry, but that is absolutely beautiful. Featuring an automatic movement and a blue and red unidirectional bezel. Wow. Isn't that great? 
Look at all. Oh, it's a Melly C uh, Pornathon. Look at this. I don't know how much that costs, but I'm going to go check it out. Sorry about that, Andrew. I skipped it because it didn't have a picture because I'm, I'm doing it that way. Anyway, now I know what it is. Now I know what it is. This is from Bert. And this is beautiful, man. Look at this. Wow. This is absolutely anti-magnetic. It makes you wonder what were they using back then to make that to make that anti-magnetic. Chronograph Suisse, the Princesa, Uncle, 17 rubies. This is amazing. Wow. This is a classy beast. Perfect size on your big hairy mitts. Look at that. Looking great, Bert. Is that one shot? I'm lusting for more. More wrist porn. That's beautiful. That is seriously one of the seriously one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Oh, here's Carolyn Martin's Wesley. Let's blow him up. Can I blow him up? I can't blow him up. Can I blow it up? That's as far as it'll let me go. Oh. I don't know what format this picture's in. We survived last night's PDF thing. And here's her loves. Oh, this is great. Thank you, Carolyn. One moment, please. I will get to that picture in a second. Oh, man. Hey, is that you? <laughs> so mysterious. Beautiful leg, beautiful horse. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Look at the mane. Absolutely stunning. Thank you, Carolyn. And I think there's another one from you. Hold on. No, those, those two. Rufus. Oh, these are crazy town. Crazy town. Well, you know, we're talking about Vacheron. So with the Chinese uh, perpetual calendar. You know me, I have a little schivazzo from Tourbillons. I don't know what it is about them. It looks like guts to me. It looks like uh, the, I, maybe it's because I'm a Star Trek nerd and it just reminds me of the Borg. I just get kind of freaked out. I would never want a Tourbillon watch. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Chinese perpetual calendar instead. Beautiful, though. Beautiful. Is that it? Okay. Thank you so much for that. Hey, here's another Smith's. Aaron O'Malley had his uh, his Smith's Explorer up the other day, and wasn't that quite beautiful? Look, okay, I mean, this is do for repair, dear friend. You need to get a hand job on that <laughs> with rivets. Uh, are you in England? I hope you are. Is that one shot? One shot? Because uh, they're still in existence, and you could get it from them. What did you say from the '60s? I want to fix. Oh, it's from Vasilios. Oh, you're in Greece. Um, email me. I might I might know a guy that can fix an old Smith's. Very, very possibly. Mark Wild, Wild, Wild. With his yacht master. One of my favorite combinations, that beautiful blue sunburst. Absolutely gorgeous. Looks great on you. I love Polo Center links. Sorry, kids. I know people are like crazy about it. I don't know. People either love or hate this watch. I happen to think it is a stunner. Absolute stunner. I love it. Is that just one? Sometimes there's two pictures there. And from Dave. Oh! oh! <laughs> See, I thought they only came this way. Look at this. They got one. Baby's first car. You got the Cybertruck. I mean, it's mean looking. I mean, is this the thing of the future? Is this what's going to happen? Wow, it's crazy. Well, that's the pictures. That's the Bastards Galleries, yes? So let me get back to the end of the chats so I don't mi miss anything. Al says 100% Japan made instrument from Japan. That's where I was. Uh, uh, 
Ray Ray was cheating on me. Okay, let me get to the very end. Uh, uh, Brusselum, do you know Adam Neely? I don't know who Adam Neely is. Who is Adam Neely? Tell me all about it. Um, and Scotty Love, send those pictures as soon as you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, Boulevard dial looks like a Gemini capsule. It sure does. Uh, Magic Mice says, I keep thinking that Ashima would make a great film composer. What do you think? I know he would. <laughs> I've told him that a million times. I'm obsessed with David Arnold. And we all love John Williams, and I have a, I'm a very big fan. I'm not the, the biggest fan of uh, a lot of the other modern composers that are out there and doing lots of movies. My favorite modern composer other than, and he is modern because he's alive and he's still making movies. Is I mean, obviously no one can touch John Williams, uh, but I love like, you know, Bernard Herrmann and Franz Waxman, but David Arnold is my favorite composer. Uh that's not John Williams. And he's the guy that did uh, the Bond films from uh, Tomorrow Never Dies up until uh, Quantum of Solace. And then they got Thomas Newman to ruin Skyfall, which was a shitty movie anyway. And then the next movie, which was better, but not as good. And then I don't even know who scored No Time to Die. I have no idea. I know they went through like four different composers. I'm like, call David Arnold. David Arnold was handpicked by John Barry to replace him. And, uh, he started out with an album called Shaken and Stirred. He wrote No Good About Goodbye for Shirley Bassey, which was pulled at the last minute for Quantum of Solace, for Jack White and Alicia Keys, the worst song ever written for a Bond theme. The worst song. Almost as bad. Well, better. Well, which is better? Which is worse? Sam Smith's horrific crap song, which won an Oscar. Uh, I think Jack White and Alicia Keys is the worst. Uh, I do like Skyfall. I think Adele's amazing. And I love the Billie Eilish song. I think it's great. But the one the it's like, I'm going to take you back to think, to think, to think, to see. Beep, 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 beep. It's the worst song ever. And then the Shirley Bassey, go Google, no good about goodbye. That was recorded, written by David Arnold for the movie he scored with Shirley Bassey, who is the voice of Bond. And it didn't work out because the producer's like, now we need somebody current. You know, I mean, I wished Amy Winehouse had done one and she never got to do it. Uh, Ashim would be a fucking great composer. Are you kidding me? He's, you know, he's done it. He's composed for orchestra, like 64 piece orchestra, I mean, even more, you know, tons of woodwinds, tons of strings. I mean, the guy, you know, he'd be a great, I, I, I know it. I've seen it. I've seen him do it. So, yeah. Uh, oh, Wow. Wow, we were talking about that Scotty Love. We we're talking about Barry Lyndon. I need to see it. I haven't seen it since a million years ago. And I don't like Ryan O'Neill. Uh, maybe he's good in this. And Marissa Berenson, I don't get either. But every single shot does look like uh, a, like a, an amazing painting. And I know they shot it in candlelight and natural light. And, I, mean, I mean, he was a genius, you know. Ray Ray says, thank you, Dirk. One of four bull of us, Crown at Six, works in her best. I know. I love the Crown at Six. Fantastic. The park, parking meter issue. Fantastic. Uh, Bert says it was a great shot. Zoot suits. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, what is that car? That is the Tesla Cybertruck. That's what it is. It's 9,000 pounds. Very safe. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you get hit in that thing, the person who hits you is going to be dead. Uh, Dirk, what you do is just perfect. Please never stop being you. Oh, Ray Ray. Oh, I love you too, man. Thank you very much. I love doing this every single day with you guys. Uh, it gives me purpose. Can I just say you all give me purpose? You know, I haven't had the best, you know, year, you know, and, uh, and you know, you know me, I'm a big softy. Melly C. Yes, it was only released today. Oh, is that right? Oh, that watch was released today. The, the, the Timex Pepsi. Oh shit. I got to get one. I got to get one. Conair, thanks, Dave. Uh, Karen, probably Mercury. Well, Mer Mercury is my my planet, my astrological planet, because I'm a ge Gemini. Dirk, the new Snoopy watch is about 350 Not bad for an automatic. Not bad. I mean, listen, if you compare it to like, I would totally get that over the moon swatch, the Snoopy moon swatch. I'd rather have that. Isn't that cooler? All those old vintage chronos were so thin. Now every chrono is like, I agree, man. Well, why can't they make thin chronos anymore, Toby? You're so right. You could not be more right. Somebody with, uh, well, you're always very logical. Um, but that's so Vulcan of you. It's so true. What happened? What happened? I don't understand. Especially, listen, the Langes. Lange is zone. They're so thick. They look like 
they look like snuff boxes. You know what a snuff box is? It's like in the turn of the century in Renaissance times, they keep their co cocaine <laughs> to revive themselves at parties and fancy do's. And they would always have like a wrist snuff box, <laughs> mm, you know, or, or, or to cover up the smell of the excrement and dead because, you know, there was no sanitation. So the palace of Versailles, while dancing the minuet, you know, uh, you had to smell everybody's body odor and crotch rot and all the disgusting things. So you'd constantly be, you know, perfuming your nose. I don't know why. Like the Lang, the Lange Zona, those things are so beautiful, but they're so freaking thick. I don't get it. Vacheron Constantin pocket watch with 63 complications breaking their own razor. You know, Vacheron is crazy. I would like to see those. Uh, I would like to see the uh, dual timer and the chronograph in person because I would like it to be green. I like the tourbillon that is only visible on the back. I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. The truck. That truck was a wrap. Yeah, it totally is. I love the Stepford Wives from Dan. Hey, do you know what else he did? And I didn't realize it because it was a stupid movie. And I saw it a million years ago before I became mad for David Arnold. He did Independence Day. And if you listen to the score for that, and I did yesterday, it's incredible. Yeah, I'm not a Hans Zimmer, you know, too much electric, electric shit. I'm not into it. He's great. Yes, I get it. Yeah. Um, Brian O'Neill was a drunk. He, he, he used to do cocaine with his 11 year old daughter. You know what I mean? You know, Ryan, uh, Tatum O'Neill's so fucked up. And one of the reasons why she's so fucked up is because her dad was a deadbeat idiot. You know what I mean? Who, who does cocaine with their child? I mean, that couldn't happen now. Right. In that livery, it looks like the Patek truck. I agree. Um, Yeah. That about the, the the Pepsi watch, and it's not plastic. I know, I know, I know, I know. Mark Wild says that Tesla. Listen, my nephew got a Tesla, and I said, "Hey, can you take me for a quick ride?" He hit the gas pedal or whatever you call it now, and I was actually frightened. I have never felt torque like that in my life. I went like this. I got sucked into the seat. It was so scary. Magic Mike says the darkest day from day. It's amazing. The darkest day. Anyway, I'm 22 minutes over my time. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you for thank you uh, for coming here for Speedy Tuesday. Um, look, I, I put up the wrong wrist because I'm wearing it on my other hand so I don't bang into the microphone and ruin, ruin my Speedmaster. Thank you all for coming in today. You're all beautiful people. Uh, these are my Patreons, the beautiful Patreon Pantheon. Jim Lassick, Andrew Wilkowicz, Go Moto Soto. Go Moto Soto. I don't know where you've been, but I owe you a card and a CD and... Send me your address. Nick Sisto, Complicated Time, Fergal McDermott, Nathaniel Hannon, Dane O'Malley, because she's my friend, Lord Scotty H., Lord Sire, Dean McKenzie, Al Benedetti, Angelo Minichello, which I fixed the spelling, and Gasman, Gasman 308. He got a song, because, you know, Sam Led left us. And uh, so I have to make up new songs as I go along, you know? Um, so those are the patrons. I want to thank the, uh, my super chatters for today. Thank you so much to Andrew, Dean, and Mr. Bad Gas. I know it's a Tuesday, so thank you so much. I appreciate it because, you know, this is my job now. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who sent in pictures to the Bastards Gallery. Uh, it is my privilege to, to uh, showcase and share your lives and the things you love. Um, I, I'm here every single day from five to six, except for Fridays when the big guy comes and joins me after who needs a drink. And that is called classic bashers. This is Dirk weekdays. I am your host Dirk, and I'm also doing Sunday mass 3 PM on Sundays. If you want to repent, rejoice, renew, you tell me whatever you want to do. Uh, also nobody answered my question on Sunday mass for all of my Catholic friends. Do you feel it's necessary to go to confession before you receive communion? And Nathaniel usually, because he's catholic -y, very catholic -y in the Catholic system. Uh, I think no. Um, but, you know, maybe people take it very seriously. I'm not, you know, I'm a loosey-goosey rule person. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I want to just remind you, Always say please and thank you. Always hold the door open. And remember that the person that you're dealing with, while very irate, might be not having the same excellent day that you are. Give people the benefit of the doubt. Give them enough rope to hang themselves. And if they do hang themselves, just remember, 
uh, be nice unless you find out that they're a total c- uh, 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 uh.